Let's talk about my personal area of expertise, recommender systems. So systems that can recommend stuff to people based on what everybody else did. We'll look at some examples of this and a couple of ways to do it, specifically two techniques called user-based and item-based collaborative filtering. So let's dive in. I want to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, recommender systems. If you remember, I actually spent the most of my career at amazon.com and imdb.com and a lot of what I did there was developing recommender systems. Things like people who bought also bought or recommended for you and things that did movie recommendations for people. So this is something I know a lot about personally and I hope to share some of that knowledge with you. So what do we mean by recommender systems? Well, like I said, Amazon's a great example and one that I'm very familiar with. Uh, so if you go to their recommendations section here, you can see that it actually will recommend things that you might be interested in purchasing based on your past behavior on the site. And that might include things that you rated or things that you bought and among other signals that it might use as well. Can't go into the details because they'll hunt me down and, you know, do bad things to me. But um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good stuff, too. And you can also think of the people who bought also bought feature on Amazon as a form of a recommender system. The difference is that the recommendations you're seeing here are based on all of your past behavior. Whereas people who bought also bought or people who viewed also viewed, things like that are just based on the thing you're looking at right now or the thing that you're thinking of buying right now and showing you things that are similar to it that you might also be interested in. And it turns out what you're doing right now is probably the strongest signal of your interest anyhow. Another example is from Netflix. So they have various features that try to recommend new movies or other movies you haven't seen yet based on the movies that you liked or watched in the past as well. And they break that down by genre. And they have kind of a different spin on things where they try to identify the genres or the types of movies that they think you're enjoying the most and they show you more results from those genres. So that's another example of a recommender system in action. And the whole point of it is to help you discover things that you might not have known about before. So it's pretty cool. You know, it gives movies or books or music or whatever a chance to be discovered by people who might not have heard about it before. So, you know, not only is it cool technology, it also kind of levels the playing field a little bit. and helps new items get discovered by the masses. So it plays a very important role in today's society. At least I'd like to think so. So <clears throat> there's a few ways of doing this. Let's talk about recommending stuff based on your past behavior. One technique is called user-based collaborative filtering. And here's how it works. Collaborative filtering, by the way, just a fancy na name for saying recommending stuff based on the combination of what you did and what everybody else did, okay? So it's looking at your behavior and comparing that to everyone else's behavior to arrive at things that might be interesting to you that you haven't heard of yet. So the idea here is we build up a matrix of everything every user that I have has ever bought or viewed or rated or whatever signal of interest that you want to base this system off of. So basically I end up with a row for every user in my system and that row contains all of the things they did that might indicate some sort of interest in a given product. So picture a table, I have users for the rows and each column is an item, okay? That might be a movie, a product, whatever, a web page. You can, you can use this for many different things. Then I use that matrix to compute the similarity between different users. So I basically treat each row of this as a vector, and I can compute the similarity between each vector of users based on their behavior. So, you know, two users who liked mostly the same things would be very similar to each other. And I can then sort this by those similarity scores. So if I can find all the users similar to you based on their past behavior. I can then find the users most similar to me and then recommend stuff that they liked that I didn't look at yet. Okay, so, you know, let's look at a real example and it'll make a little bit more sense. So let's uh, say that this nice lady here watched Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back and she loved them both. So we have a user vector here of this lady liked Gave five stars rating, more specifically, to Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back. So let's say Mr. Edgy Mohawk Man comes along, and he only watched Star Wars. That's the, uh, the only thing he's seen. He doesn't know about The Empire Strikes Back yet somehow. He lives in some strange universe where he doesn't know that there's actually many, many Star Wars movies. Growing, by, growing every year, in fact. But we can say, well, this guy's actually pretty similar to this other lady because they both enjoyed Star Wars a lot, so their similarity score is probably fairly good. And we can say, okay, well, what has this lady enjoyed that he hasn't seen yet? And The Empire Strikes Back is one. So we can then take that information that these two users are similar based on their enjoyment of Star Wars, find that this lady also liked Empire Strikes Back, and that might be a good recommendation for Mr. Edgy Mohawk Man. And we can go ahead and <clears throat> recommend him The Empire Strikes Back, and he'll probably love it. Because, in my opinion, 
it's actually a better film. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into a uh, geek wars with you here. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, user-based collaborative filtering has some limitations. When we think about relationships and recommending things based on relationships between items and people and whatnot, we tend to, our mind tends to go on relationships between people. So we want to find people that are similar to you and recommend stuff that they liked. Kind of the intuitive thing to do, but it's not the best thing to do. One problem is that people are fickle. Their tastes are always changing. So maybe that nice lady in the previous slides had sort of a brief science fiction action film phase that she went through. And she got over it. And maybe later on in her life, she started getting more into, you know, dramas or romance films or rom-coms, right? So what would happen if my edgy Mohawk guy ended up with a high similarity to her just based on her earlier sci-fi period? And we ended up recommending romantic comedies to him as a result. That would be bad, right? I mean, there is some protection against that in terms of how we compute the similarity scores to begin with. But it still pollutes our data that people's tastes can change over time. So comparing people to people isn't always a straightforward thing to do because people change. The other problem is that there's usually a lot more people than there are things in your system. So 7 billion people in the world and counting, there's probably not 7 billion movies in the world or 7 billion items that you might be recommending out of your catalog. So the computational problem of finding all the similarities between all of the users in your system is probably much greater than the problem of finding similarities between the items in your system. So by focusing the system on users, you're making your computational problem a lot harder than it might need to be because you have a lot of users. At least hopefully you do if you're working for a successful company. The other problem is that people do bad things. There's a very real economic incentive to make sure that your product or your movie or whatever it is gets recommended to people. And there are people who try to game the system to make that happen for their, their new movie or their new product or their new book or whatever. And when you're basing this on user relationships, it's pretty easy to fabricate fake personas in the system by creating a new user and having them do a sequence of events that, you know, likes a lot of popular items and then likes your item too, right? Uh, this is called a shilling attack. And we want to ideally have a system that can deal with that. There is research around how to detect and avoid these shilling attacks in user-based collaborative filtering, but an even better approach would be to use a totally different approach entirely that's not so susceptible to gaming the system. And we'll talk about that in our next lecture. There is a way to flip this all in its head and actually do better than user-based collaborative filtering. So that's user-based collaborative filtering. Again, a simple concept. You look at similarities between users based on their behavior and recommend stuff that a user enjoyed that was similar to you that you haven't seen yet. Now, it had, does have its limitations, as we talked about. So let's talk about flipping the whole thing on its head with a technique called item-based collaborative filtering up next.